Okay, so welcome to this talk about the backup app. Um, so we're gonna go through uh, a few topics here. Uh, the slides are much too long for 30 minutes. The goal was intended to get some documentation also in the meanwhile. So I am gonna skip uh, some of them during this talk to keep the schedule. Um, first important notice, uh, of course, Camp2Camp Camp was driving most of this project, but it's a joint work of several uh, stakeholder to achieve uh, all this work. Uh, so of course we had a customer that was funding most of the, of the work and then several other integrators that works alongside with us to achieve it, plus a, a specialist in the supply chain consulting, Swiss consulting that helped us in uh, making all this happen uh, for this project. So a few words of why we did that. Uh, so first of all, I think the main reason was we wanted to get a decoupled barcode app from the transactional world of Odoo, right? So when you work in the warehouse, you work as an operator on some uh, very pragmatic uh, things and you do not really care about the transactional aspect in Odoo. Uh, and that's one of the major issue with the current barcode app of uh, Odoo Enterprise actually. Also, we wanted to get uh, something easily extendable and that really wasn't the case today with the enterprise app, especially if you want to leverage the community uh, to contribute to it. Um, that was, I think, the, the main reason why we started this work. Also, for us, the, the barcode app we found on the market was uh, really lacking of advanced features to manage especially errors or to guide users properly. And other solution that we we tried before going on this big work, uh, either they were relying on the Odoo front end, and that we did not want it, neither uh, for uh, reality purposes, or rely on very old technology like a terminal, uh, or was a proprietary solution, and that wasn't in our plan neither. So for all those reasons, we decided to kickstart this big project. Uh, from an architecture point of view, so the front end is built on Vue.js and Vuetify.js. Uh, so it's a single app page on the front side or client side. And all the business logic is in the shop floor mod backend module. It's another module that exposes a REST API uh, based on the base REST, uh, excellent base REST framework from the OCA. Um, so everyone can add or extend the scenario. You will see what the scenario means later on. So it's easily extendable. Um, and as well, a, a cool thing is it's entirely configurable in the Odoo backend. So you can configure the menu. Everything the user will see on the scanner is actually configured in the Odoo backend. So you can really choose uh, how to, to name the items and, and what operation will be run in each of the menu items the operator will see. The main advantages, uh, well, first of all, you can reuse the REST API we provide to connect whatever warehouse uh, application you might want in the future. So here we have a barcode front-end app, but you could imagine connecting a lot of other things to, to this API. Then each of the scenario we provide is really the most efficient scanning sequence for a job. That was really the goal. So we have several scenario and you apply one of the scenario to a certain task to be the most efficient one. And uh, it uh, also handled the most common warehouse issues like you want a zero check. When you empty a bin, you want to be able to sometimes to switch a lot uh, or a pack that the system recommends you to pick. You want to be able to take over an operation of somebody else, those kind of, of, uh, of common um, behavior you expect from a professional uh, warehouse management system. Um, this works on a, any browser capable device. So it could work on a barcode uh, scanner, but it could also work on a mobile uh, device like an iPad or whatever, Android phones. The interface is rather clean. You will see that later on. Um, it supports translation as well. That's also something important for us that it could be used anywhere in this world. And uh, as I already told you, it's entirely configurable through the Odoo backend that we will see together. Before I go in the, in the demo, uh, I need you to understand a little bit the context in which we use it today. So today in the 
in the warehouse for which we did all this work, this a practice that every logistic unit that gets in the warehouse, whether it's a box or a pallet, will get a unique uh, identification number called sometimes SSCC uh, for um, serial shipping container code. So it's a unique ID for every logistic unit. In the context of Odoo, it means we are using PAC for any u logistic unit that moves in this warehouse from the reception to the output. Um, it's a great asset to do so because when you scan whatever uh, pack ID in the warehouse, you always know if there's any transaction already linked to it. So you never get lost or, or, or lose context of uh, something you see in front of you. Uh, also, uh, in our case, we used pre-printed uh, pack ID. So we do not uh, print label out of Odoo. It's sometimes too slow depending on the volumes. So you can uh, easily use a pre-printed label. And what you need to do is to import those pre-printed label as a known package in Odoo. And therefore you can just use it as, uh, as they are created in the system. So those are the important points to notice before we dive a bit further on the, on the thing. So the configuration, you can find the configuration uh, part in this menu here at the far end of the configuration of the inventory app. Those are the things you are able to configure. Um, so we will start with the profile. So the profile is intended to be created for each zone and machine type. So for example, in our case, if I have a look on, on the profile we have. So for example, we have a profile for every picking operation, a profile for every packing operation for transport operation, or for example, for the high bay. So this you create whatever you want. It's a user will then after log in a given profile and each profile is linked to one or several menus. So it's a way for you to organize the different operation that people can process. And it's advised to create a profile per machine type and or zone. And then you have the menu item. So a menu item, is actually a link between a profile, a scenario, and an operation type or several operation type. So basically what it means, I just want to see if I can zoom in a bit. Let me just one minute. Uh, maybe it's better like this. So basically, uh, for example, if I take uh, the pack pal for packing pallet. The scenario that's gonna be used is the checkout packing scenario. We will review all the scenario afterwards. The profile link to it is the SCHP pack for a certain zone and a certain op uh, operation. And the operation type in Odoo is the pack pal. So this allows you to unlink the operation type of Odoo, which is linked to the transactional world, like how you want to organize your thing depending on the route you have in your warehouse, uh, depending on the reports, on how you want to classify your moves. This is really linked to transactional world. Whereas here is really linked to the operational world of uh, a warehouse. For example, this first menu item here will actually be able to process moves classified in several operation type using a single menu. I think this is a big advantage of this solution compared, for example, to the barcode app we have in Odoo, uh, where it's really tightly linked to operation type. It's perfectly fine for small uh, or, or medium-sized warehouses. Uh, when you go big, uh, you really need to, to achieve more than just one uh, menu per, per operation type. So everything here will be configured in the back end, right? And it really allows you to create all the menu that a given operator in the warehouse will actually see. Then for some scenario, you will have some options uh, that allows you to customize a little bit the things. Like for example, here I have a scenario for the cluster picking. Well, actually this is the main uh, used picking I know. Um, so you will pick several orders on a vegan and then unload this vegan to the checkout or packing zone. And here you have an option to automatically create batch and you can actually tell the system how many batch at the most you can include in one batch. Uh, if there's any volume or weight limit 
uh, I don't know, maybe above 500 kilo, the picker is not able to move the, his wagon anymore. So you want to limit by batch of 500 kilo uh, or, or something of this kind. So those are the available options. Not all scenario get options, but some of them. Today, this is all the scenario we have. So a single pack transfer to move uh, an existing pack from A to B. Location transfer scenario, this move all the content of a location from A to B, C, D, or several destination location. We have the zone picking, a very interesting one that allows you to pick lines across several operation type uh, based on a zone, a zone being uh, a location in the tree of location in Odoo. We will see this further as well. We have the cluster picking, as I told you, picking several other. The checkout and packing, this is to realize the packing operation and the delivery to ship it. Uh, well, the single pack transfer is probably the least interesting for all of you. Maybe I skip it to get more time for the other scenario. So basically, the example, you can use that for making a putaways. For example, when you receive something and properly uh, labeled each uh, logistic unit, for example, pallets with a pack ID, then you can scan it to process the, the putaways. Uh, and it's actually move a pack from a location to a, another. The screens look like this quickly. I go over them um, as I rather prefer focus on the others. Uh, then we have the zone picking. So the zone picking is probably the most interesting one to see here. Uh, so in our case, it's used in the high bay, for example, to get all moves of a given ASIL uh, independently of the operation type, right? So you want just to work in a zone and get all the moves uh, there and you you draw your own plan and you decide what to pick when. So basically, you will have the possibility to take all goods from several locations in one ASL. And every of the goods you have to pick will be packed in a, in a new pack if you pick part of the goods, or you can just retrieve the whole pack uh, if you take the whole pallet, for example. Uh, so here we could go through a little demo. So. This is actually the barcode app that we see now. And I'm going to go in the high bay uh, to realize this zone picking. So first thing I do, I, I scan the zone when, where I want to work. And the system displays me a little summary per operation type of the thing I have to do. And here I will ask for the replenishment move uh, that I want to look for. And the system will display me a list of the moves I have in this ASL uh, to, to proceed with. It's a responsive screen. If you have a bigger screen in this part, you can also display it like this. Uh, and you can order it either by location or by priority, depending on uh, what's best option for you. So there, the pickers really choose for with which move you're going to start picking things. And it can scan either the pack, either the location. So if we scan the pack, um, it just get directed. Oh, I made a mistake. So if I scan the pack, so I read in the first screen where I should go, I go there, then I shoot the pack. The system tells me what I'm supposed to, to take here. And here I need to give the system the destination package. Uh, so I need to stick a new PID to this new logistic unit, right? Because I'm taking two transport boxes out of this uh, out of this pallet. And therefore I need to take my little cheat sheet here. Uh, so my destination package will be this one. So I take two boxes and I place them uh, and stick this new uh, SSCC to this uh, pack. And then I can also uh, just tick here to confirm the pack I take. This is another option for selecting a line I want to proceed with. And the same applies. I just actually stick a new PID. Of course, if I scan an existing one, the system will warn me and so on and so on. So here I also have two transport boxes to pick and I stick this new PID to it. To be noted, this nice widget that really helps the operator to know what he should pick. 
if it's a retail box, a transport box, a pallet. So instead of just seeing quantities, you really know how many boxes you have to touch. And this is really helping lowering the mistakes uh, in such an operation. So when I'm, I'm full, right? So I have taken my pallet. I have put uh, the first uh, line I have, I have taken. I have put the second line I have taken. My pallet is now full. I can ask to unload it at the destination. And therefore, I just can check that what I've picked is correct. And when I'm happy, I just need to confirm the handover place where I put this pallet with the content on it. And the system will just confirm me uh, that the package has been processed. So at this stage, we have moved our goods from the ASL to the handover place. So that's the zone picking. Uh, just checking the time. Yeah, okay. So that we've seen. 15 minutes left. 15 minutes left? I double okay. check. Yes, next talk starts at uh, 10 past. So actually 10 minutes left. Okay. Um, then the location content transfer. So this is where you can scan a, a location, take all its content and go in one or several destination places to unload the goods. So we can absolutely use that to take what I just placed on this buffer, right? And, and take it to, to unload it in the, at their destination place. So actually you can, as I mentioned, take the world location content and place it every, unload everything at the same place or split it and put it in several places. In this scenario, you can also uh, uh, trigger the petaway computation that will actually help you find a destination place for your goods. Um, so I will go in the proper menu for doing so. So again, this is another machine, right? That's gonna take the goods from this handover place in my case. Uh, and that's the menu item. And here, what I do is I scan the location where I just loaded the, this pallet with the two boxes on it. And the system tells me, okay, that's what I see. That's what you should get uh, here. And this NSB place is where you should go. So basically I just need a cheat sheet here. So here I would have the possibility to unload everything at one place, or I can just ask to split by line. And in that case, the system will tell me, okay, uh, now you should proceed this pack. Please confirm me that you're taking this OCA desk pack four. Uh, so I will do. So I confirm I'm taking this one. And here I say, okay, I put that in this place. Then the system will tell me my next um, package to process with. This is the zero three. And there I can maybe say, okay, this one I put in the number two. Important thing to notice about this scenario, uh, you have several options you can do. Uh, I did not show to get skip lines. So when you will unload the goods and the corridor when you want to go is maybe occupied by somebody else, you can just skip a line. So the system will switch to the next one and you will be asked to process this line at the end. Uh, this could help uh, when, I don't know, there's water on the floor or whatever happened that you cannot go there. You can just skip the line and keep going. Uh, seems a, uh, obvious, but it's very important features. Um, and um, also an important uh, point of this location content transfer that it computes a smart pass for unloading your goods within uh, the, across the different locations, right? So it will try to compute for you a smooth path across all your, your zone uh, to get your uh, put away uh, a smooth one. Uh, that's it for this location content transfer, I guess. So now we will see together this cluster picking. So as I've mentioned, the cluster pick in my case will pick up stuff in the shelving zone and bring it to the packing zone. And a cluster pick means I have several goods in several bins and I, I'm driving a wagon with several uh, floor. Uh, and I will attribute every uh, picked product in a, in a bin of the vegan, if you want, which is materialized as a pack in a do. 
and I will try to gather the goods of the same order in the same bin. If I have no more space, then of course I can use another one. Um, so that's about the cluster picking. Uh, what else that I talk afterwards? Okay, so let's go ahead. Just need to check my cheat sheet here. So to get to the pick, I need to switch profile. So the guy processing the picking is also using another machine that the guy processing the transport. And here is all the different thing. I will work in the parcel picking. And here you remember we had several options when we configured the menu. So if I go back, when I pick, I can ask for getting an automatic creation of batches. And then the system will take the most priority order to pick when I hit this get work button. Or I go for a manual option and the warehouse manager have to create batch and assign them to people or not assigning them. And the first one hitting the button is taking the batch. This is the two, uh, those are the two options available here. So in my case, I did it uh, an automatic way. So when I hit the get work button, the system create the batch and at this stage, I can always cancel it or I can start it. If I start it, I need to go to the end. I have a little summary here of the total operation. So this is the number of order I'm gonna pick in my case too. I have four lines to pick for those two order and I can have uh, more information if I use those button. If I'm happy uh, with that, I choose the vegan appropriate for this operation and I can just start it. And here the system computes for me a smart ways across all the location in my shelving zone. Uh, so I do, I do make a, an optimized uh, sequence to, in, uh, across all uh, locations. Um, and to pick things here, we always recommend people to actually scan the location. It's usually a good practice to always scan the location because the uh, barcode is uh, reachable and uh, and it confirms you are the proper place. You could also scan the package, right? So both are supported by this scenario, but we recommend always to use this uh, barcode there. So when I confirm I'm at the right place, the system tells me, okay, you reached the right place. This is the product you should pick. And in my case, I should take one retail box, which is 180 uh, quantity. And here I need to scan a destination bin of my vegan in which I gonna place this product. So in my case, I will use this one for this order. Oh, you see this one is not empty. I need to take another one. So here we see that I cannot use the pack or scan the pack of a wagon that is already taken by somebody else. So here it confirmed me I placed it in this bin and I shall continue my tour. So in that case, I pick a second position. I confirm I'm reaching the place, it tells me what I supposed to pick. And here I'm gonna place it in the second uh, bin of my wagon. Then I keep going. You remember I had four position to pick. So I will pick them all. And here you see the system is proposing me to put it in the bin five because it belongs to the same order that the second, uh, the previous one. So this is what we're gonna do because I have space for it. So I just put it in the same bin. And maybe uh, we will do another example here. So I will confirm I reach uh, this place here. Oh, I made a typo. Yes, Five and here, sorry? Five minutes, yeah. So here I, I suppose to place it in the bin four, but imagine I have no more space, then I can use another one. Then I'm supposed to take my vegan to a packing zone and uh, unload all the vegan at one place. I'm gonna take one and I'm done. The system will confirm me. I have processed it and I can start with another batch. That was the uh, cluster picking demo. Uh, and maybe I will quickly jump on the checkout because we're running a bit out of time. So the checkout is actually processing. In my case, I will do an example with uh, parcel delivery. So I'm in a pack and deliver process, right? So it's gonna pack and ship the goods at the same time. Uh, with this scenario, 
you can really do a lot of things uh, like merging the packs, uh, check out the pack as it is, or create new packs. There's a lot of possible ways to do that all with the scanners. And it's a very easy and convenient way. You can always go back. If anything goes wrong, you can destroy what you've done and start over. To do so, you need to reach the pack menu through this profile. So in my case, I have several checkout zone. I would choose this DHL one. So here I could either choose a manual one and I choose the one I want to check out, or I can just scan whatever pack I have and the system will actually open me the checkout for this order. So if I just do that, the system recognizes I have that on this vegan. It tells me, right, for this order, you have two packs and I need to check it out. So if I'm happy to check it out this way, I can just confirm one of the pack. So here I shoot the first pack I see and I can just assign it to a new pack, for example. And the second pack I will also check out. And here I could stack those two packs together. So I just choose existing pack and I can just merge it on the new created pack. And here I have just one pack with my two product in it. So I ship it as one box and I mark it as done. And the system will then take a little bit of time and call the DHL API, print the labels and output everything I supposed to stick on my, uh, on my box. Uh, so this is for the checkout. I have three minutes left. <laughs> Seems a bit like a sprint. I just want to show you up this delivery. Time for questions. Time for questions? Well, uh, there's okay. at least one, two now. Uh, I take 30 seconds just for one important information about the delivery. The main advantage of this scenario is like you're just scanning the pack ID you have in front of you that you load in the truck. You do not really need to choose a delivery order on which you want to work, right? You just, you have pallet in front of you, you load them in the truck, you just shoot whatever pallet you load in this truck, and then you have a menu that helps you to see with the progress bar if there's other pack or pallet that belong to the same order, so you do not forget to load all packs related to one order in the same truck. Uh, so this is the main advantage of this delivery. Uh, and now I give some time for the questions. Thanks a lot, Joel. It's a really impressive demo you made here. So first question by uh, Kitty. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, Kitty is wondering if the barcode app uh, the, you've shown will work only with the full WMS or could it be made to work with the standard inventory app? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. Uh... It's gonna work without the full uh, WMS stack. So this WMS stack has been made modular. So you're free to use only a portion of it or uh, additional features uh, as, as long as your needs uh, keeps growing. So in the case of this app, it's, it will work on a plain uh, Odoo uh, inventory. I think there's two little modules included in there, um, uh, but it makes sense as a wall for the barcode app. Uh, like, for example, we have to add a little fields to give some information for the packing operation or so. So we have a few modules that are mandatory uh, as a dependency for this Shopflow app, but uh, it does not require uh, other modules from the WMS stack to work. So you can just free to use it uh, as, a, as any other module in the OCA. Okay. Uh, next question by Christoph, who would like to know for which version of Odoo uh, is this available? So this has been published for version 13. Uh, I've seen someone have started to backport it for version 12. And uh, yeah, I guess we we probably migrate that to version 14 during the next year. Uh, that's depend also on customer and demands. Okay. And I think that's a front end in any case, since it's a Vue.js app, it has uh, little dependencies on Udo. So it's mainly... About the, but you uh, need the, the shop floor backend module to make it work, right? So the front end app, you don't need to touch it for next version. That's the main advantages of this mm -hmm. architecture. But the backend module with all the business logic uh, yeah. will have to be migrated. Okay. Uh, next question by Carl is, uh, can it support RFID tags? 
Well, that's uh, that's okay. I mean, um, these uh, RFID tags are in fact just a way to encode uh, an, S, uh, an SSCC or a PAC ID, right? So either you stick barcode and you scan them with a barcode reader, or you could stick a RFID uh, chip and then you can scan them using a, uh, an RFID uh, barcode reader instead. Uh, um, sorry, not barcode, <laughs> an RFID reader instead of the barcode reader. So it works exactly the same, uh, actually, right? So there's nothing to do uh, to support it. So you only need a, an RFID uh, text input, basically. Yeah, exactly. That's what you need. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, maybe I just want to enlighten this if anyone want to contribute yes. to it. Uh, so there's the discrete picking scenario that is uh, ready and specified that anyone is free to take if they want to develop this one. Mm -hmm. uh, the info screen will like to get some love in the design and the presentation. So those are the little eye you see a bit everywhere. So those screen needs a bit of love in terms of design. Uh, and uh, translating is always welcome. If anyone wants to start migrating this to version 14 is welcome as well. And we currently do not have a reception scenario in the barcode because we used uh, a reception screen built on the front end of Odoo for historical reasons. Uh, but uh, we would love to have it uh, as a, an available scenario as well uh, in Odoo. So that was all on my side. Okay, do we have any uh, documentation about the concepts or how to extend or it's bare metal and read the code? Uh, we have a little bit of it. Uh, so it has been started in the pull request to include it in the WMS repo. So we have a readme there that uh, of course needs a bit more love, but it's a start that explains the basic concept. Um, but uh, currently, of course, we put a lot of energy in providing a robust solution. And uh, as uh, frequently, the doc is a bit uh, the poor uh, <laughs> the poor guy in the in this loop. But we have not nothing neither, right? So we have the world requirements in the reference document. You can find uh, all the, the specification that really help a lot to in understand how the thing has been built and how it works. And you have now this presentation. I really suggest uh, the interested people to read it a bit more carefully. I added a lot of text in there to help people understand how this works from a functional perspective as well. Uh, for the technical aspect, uh, we will have to wait the readme to be produced in the next weeks. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Joël. Uh, Thanks to you.